Welcome to Cook for Opportunity. On behalf of Opportunity International Australia and our event partners tonight, Sunda, the Windsor, the City Lane, the Entrepreneurs and Collab Agency, thank you for joining us for this very special event. My name is Sarah Hornby and I'm the Victorian State Manager for Opportunity and it's my privilege to host and welcome you this evening. Cook for Opportunity is a unique collaboration of Opportunity Ambassadors, volunteers and chefs all who have given freely of their time, energy and efforts to share their passion for cooking and their passion for making a difference. All registrations and donations made this evening support Opportunity's work. Now, for those of you who are new to Opportunity, I'm just going to share a little bit about what we do. Opportunity gives small loans, often as little as a few hundred dollars, to families living in poverty to help them start or grow their own small businesses. Across Southeast Asia, we work with local microfinance partners in India and Indonesia, and we're currently working with 6 million families. The amazing thing about a gift to opportunity is that once a business is up and running, families repay their loans, allowing our partners to relend the same funds to other families in need. And with 98% of loans being repaid and recycled, we're able to help more and more families over time. By providing a regular income, addressing poverty in this way enables families to become self-sufficient and do it with dignity and purpose. Look, I've seen this myself on many trips over the years to India and Indonesia, but I think the journey out of poverty is really well illustrated by Octavan, and she's a native of Brody Island in West Timor. She met her husband at a local market when he was selling vegetables and not long after they married and started a family. And to support themselves, they were selling fish at a local market. But they found with five children, it wasn't enough to cover the needs of their family. So Octavan had an idea and with a small loan from one of Opportunity's local partners, TLM, she started a small grilled fish business. She bought all the supplies she needed and set it up by the roadside. And using her own spice recipe, she set it up by the roadside and was able to start this dream business of hers. Look, there's no other store like Octavans in the area that she's working in. So from pretty much mid-morning until late in the evening, customers are coming to get her special recipe of fish. And the best thing about this is that she's not only increased her income, which is far higher than what she had just from selling fish alone, but also that she has a more consistent income than what's coming in from her husband who works in the nearby paddy fields. So this business with her special grilled fish uh, recipe and her own spices has given her and her husband Abraham enough income to send all of their children to school. And in fact, their second eldest daughter is now studying English at university. And her dream is to support all her children in that way. And I'm sure many of you on this call have children as well and would agree that that is an absolute universal desire to educate our children and have the best for them. But of course, coronavirus lockdowns have had significant impacts on small businesses. And we know that from what we see here in Australia. But people living in poverty are absolutely the most vulnerable and the most at risk. So tonight, we want to give a hand up to people living in poverty with a small business so they can get things going again when lockdowns ease. $100 is enough to start a family on their journey out of poverty, to help a family like Octavans. Look, it's not a lot of money for us, but it absolutely makes a difference in the lives of those living in the most difficult circumstances. And tonight's event is aptly named On Purpose. We wanna to cook together tonight, perhaps using some of those spices that are reminiscent of the types that uh, Octavan would use when she's cooking her grilled fish. And we want to give women like Octavan the opportunity they need to get their businesses going again. So I'd encourage you just to take a moment now and have a chat to the people around you. Perhaps you're cooking tonight in your household with friends or family or perhaps your children. And they're always passionate about making a difference in the lives of others. So have a, take a moment now just to chat about what you'd like to do how many Octavans you'd like to impact through your giving tonight. And then what you need to do is just go to the Zoom chat, which is just in the bottom of your screen. There's a little box there. Click on that and you'll see now that there's a link for the Cook, to, Cook for Opportunity fundraising page. When you click on it, another screen will pop up. So you'll have a new window. 
And that means that later on when you've got clean hands and your wallet is nearby, you'll be able to pop on there and make a donation tonight. Then we'll all be able to say together that we have truly cooked for opportunity. I just want to thank you in advance for the difference that you're making and for those who have already donated when they registered for the event. Truly, it makes a difference and we appreciate your support. So while you're checking out that link at the bottom of the page, it's worth noting that that's also the area that you can pop any questions into that you might have as we're cooking along tonight. We'll do our best to make sure that the chefs uh, see any of the questions that are put into that window and we'll do our best to answer them for anyone who pops anything in. Just make sure you pop it in for all participants as other people might have the same questions as you. And don't worry if you miss something because this event is being streamed on Facebook Live as well. So following the lesson tonight, if you want to go back and check something out or you missed a step, just go to Opportunity's Facebook page and you'll be able to just click on the event and move along to the section that you need to revisit. If you want to repeat these recipes, which you absolutely will because the lamb skewers are amazing, uh, then you'll be able to do that next week when we pop the recording of the event through to you in full with a YouTube link straight into your inbox, which is awesome. All right, no doubt your ingredients are prepped, you're ready to go, your equipment is set up, and very soon we're going to cross live to the kitchen at Sunda. But first, let me introduce you to our head chef this evening. Khan Nguyen honed his skills at award-winning establishments in Sydney, including Cirrus Dining, Mr Wong, Bentley, Bacass, Red Lantern and Noma, before moving to Melbourne to helm Sunda in 2018. The new modern Southeast Asian restaurant soon became a rising star on Melbourne's food scene, making the country's best restaurant lists and earning a hat for two consecutive years in the Good Food Guide. Sunda also recently was named one of Australia's hot 50 restaurants on the world's 50 best discoveries list. And of course, he is also here with us tonight, generously giving off his time to cook for opportunity with his team. Thank you, Khan. Over to you in the kitchen. Let's cook. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, tonight for our cooking class. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for that amazing introduction. Uh, before we start, I just want to um, share some exciting news with everybody. So we've got a group of donors that has uh, offered to donate dollar for dollar every single dollar uh, donated tonight. So the more generous you are tonight, um, the more they'll basically match your donations. Um, so before we start, I want to kind of introduce the chefs. So this is Nabil and Chari and uh, John Rivera. So Hello. they're two of my chefs from Sunda. Um, so the dishes we'll be cooking is um, satay kambing, which is a lamb skewer. Uh, that's served with sambal ijo, which is green sambal. Uh, Nabil will be cooking a yellow Kerala style uh, fish curry, and John will be doing um, banana and jackfruit spring rolls. Um, so before we start, just everyone should have their ingredients already weighed out. Uh, the lamb should be marinated, your skewer should be soaked. Uh, you should have rice already cooked. So if you don't have rice, probably should get them on pretty soon. Um, so I'm gonna basically do my skewers uh, sorry, I'm going to make my sambal first, and then I'm going to do the skewer, show you guys how to skewer it. Um, Nabil's going to then do his curry. Uh, he's going to half cook it, and then John's going to show you how to do your spring rolls, which you don't have to um, cook straight away. Uh, we'll probably recommend that you finish having your dinner and then cook the spring rolls so they're nice and hot and crispy. So let's get this sambal going first. So in this bowl, I've got all the ingredients of the sambal. Uh, you should have green tomatoes in there, jalapenos. Uh, I de-seeded mine. If you like spice, you can leave the seeds in. There's also coriander, spring onions, uh, garlic. So we're just going to get that in a pot. So everything just goes in a pot with a bit of oil. You can start from a cold pot. That's how simple this recipe is. Uh, so we still have salt, lime, and white pepper on the side that we're going to season with later. So everything goes in the pot. Oh, there's also kaffir lime leaf in here, I forgot to mention. So that just goes on medium heat. And we're just going to let it cook slowly. Um, don't have to worry about too much about it. Just keep an eye on it. And um, should be ready about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, all right, we're going to start with the skewers now. So I've got some gloves.
Right, I'm just going to put on some gloves for this. So the vegetarians should be having uh, cabbage for their skewers, um, eggplant for the instead of the fish, and the spring rolls are vegetarian, so don't have to worry about that. I'll show you how to skewer the um, cabbage first. So the cabbage has been marinated in the same marinade as the spring roll. So what I like to do is basically fold the cabbage over and then fold it over again. So we're basically folding it and then putting it on the skewer. So the, mar the marinade uh, should have softened the cabbage, making it easier to put on the skewer. And the cabbage is just as delicious as the lamb. Uh, this marinade has a lot of sugar in it in the sweet soy. So when you cook it in the oven, it's going to caramelize up and be nice and beautiful and tasty. So we move on to the lamb skewers now. Again, same technique as the uh, cabbage. We fold it in half lengthwise, and then we'll start skewering it and then folding it over. So we need eight of these skewers. Um, keep an eye on your lamb skewers. I mean, sorry, keep an eye on your green sambal. I can hear that song at the back steering it for me. So we need eight of these skewers. Um, usually you will have four pieces of lamb per skewer, which would work beautifully, and it'll be a good size, and it'll be two per person, I think, for a good entree. So I first discovered these um, skewers last year when I was in Jakarta. Um, I don't know, most people see satay as um, like a peanut style sauce. So we went to a satay restaurant and we got these, which has no peanuts in it at all. Um, but it was delicious. And it was served with the green sambal, but it's a bit different to the one that we're doing tonight. Um, the one tonight's a bit fresher. A bit more acidic. So when you did slice your skewers, um, I assume everyone sliced against the grain. Uh, usually with lamb rump, if you're slicing against the grain, you'll be slicing it lengthwise. And um, that, that way it'll be more tender. So if you have anyone else at home, you should maybe get them to help you do this. Um, it is a job that takes time, but uh, it's going to be all worth it in the end, I think. So I'm only on three now. I think I'm actually getting faster as I'm going. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully. Again, keeping on those uh, on the green sunbow. Thanks, Nabil. Mm -hmm. Yep. Should they cut them? Cover them. Um, as long as you keep the marinade off the skewers, and if you soak to your skewers in water, it's not going to burn off. Even if you. Um, soak it and then grill it on the barbecue. It will prevent it from burning. And the skewers will still be pretty sturdy when, you, when it comes out of the oven. So no, you don't need to cover it. But yeah, just keep the skewers clean, free of marinade, and then there won't be anything on it at the end, which I'm actually trying very hard to do.
So at the restaurant, we also make a green sambal as well with green tomatoes, but um, Sunda being a restaurant where we use a lot of native ingredients, we also add um, desert lime to it, which really adds a, another dimension of flavor to it. But desert limes are usually pretty hard to get, so I kept it pretty simple today. So after these get skewered, we're just gonna put it to the side because they only take about 10 minutes in the oven. So we'll put it to the side and um, we'll let Nabil talk you through his dishes. And we're basically gonna try to get everything up together or around around the same time so we can enjoy a nice hot dinner. So there's gonna be a bit of um, moving. How's the sambal, John? Yeah, it looks great. Looks great. So Smells great. Again, it's only on low to medium heat, so you shouldn't have to worry about it burning. But again, if you're lucky enough to have uh, other chefs in the kitchen with you to help you, they can stir it for you while your hands have lamb and marinade on it. So this is about 600 grams of lamb rump, which makes two, four, six, seven, eight skillers. Beautiful, perfect. All right, so skewers are ready to go in the oven. So we just want to spread them out so they cook evenly. Cabbage ones on the bottom. And we'll put that to the side and the bill can jump on and cook it through his kingfish curry. All right, hello everyone. Uh, we are going to cook a Kerala style fish curry tonight. So this kind of curry I got familiar with uh, uh, growing up in Abu Dhabi where we have a lot of people from the south, Kerala, and you would find this kind of curry in most of the cafeterias around. And it's a very simple curry and it's delicious. So, Sorry to interrupt the bill. Yeah. Um, so, so I've just taken the green sambal off. Uh, it's about ready to go now. So basically you probably would have noticed that liquid would be coming out of the tomatoes when you put it on. So once all that liquid evaporates, it's good to come off. We'll let it cool down slightly and then we'll season it when it's ready to go. Back to you, yeah. Nabil. Thank you, Chef. So it's a very simple recipe. And as I said before, it was, uh, we could find this kind of curry all around uh, Emirates. And yes, so let's start by marinating the fish. Uh, to make the marinade, which you, could have, uh, which you could have done it earlier as well. So we're gonna let this marinate uh, this fish for 10 to 15 minutes with some turmeric and lime juice. So what this does is basically it slightly tenderizes the fish and gives more color as well to the fish fillet when we fancy it later on. So just a little bit. And then like that, and we're gonna flip it. And we'll quickly make some more. All right. So I used to cook, uh, first I cooked this curry actually at Sundar. Uh, for the chefs as a staff oh, meal. Staff meal, yeah. We take and our staff meal very seriously at Sunda. Yeah, I was very nervous about this recipe because it's such a simple recipe, and I was a, a bit spectacle about it. Yeah, actually, yeah. I remember him calling his mum asking for the <laughs> actual recipe, and yeah, it turned out amazing. And it's basically Melbourne's most famous fish curry, I think. There right we go. now, yeah. All right, we'll keep this to the side. So we'll let this sit for as I said before, 15 to 20 minutes. And in that meantime, what we can do is prepare the curry 
paste. Basically, this is the base for the curry. <laughs> and there you go. So in your blender, uh, you should have the onions, tomato, the onion, tomatoes, onion, tomatoes, the chilies, ginger, garlic, and the desiccated coconut. So we're just gonna blend this into a coarse paste and caramelize in some oil. Uh, I have a question yeah. Uh, uh, do we have any eggplants in the core room, John? Uh, Can you have a look? I think we do. We, yeah. we actually have an eggplant. Uh, we weren't going to because basically it'll be the exact same process. So the eggplant will be sliced. Uh, about that thickness, about one and a half centimeters. But we do have an eggplant here, so. so Chef, if you can help me. <laughs> yep. If you can help me by cutting into a long strip, maybe. Yes, Chef. All right, so you guys are going to hear a loud noise as I'm going to blend this one. It gets there. It gets. <laughs> All right, sorry about all that noise. So we have our paste ready now. And Cass, if you can come here, we can show how it looks. It doesn't need to be super fine or uh, it just needs to be blended and in, into a coarse paste. So we're gonna leave this on the side. And, uh, all right, I've got the eggplant, Chef. Ah, oh, perfect. Do we have any more yeah. marinade? Oh, uh, we can quickly make some. Yeah, let's quickly make some. Uh, if you can help me by passing me a lime fork. Lime juice, right? Uh, I have some lime juice here. Yeah, yeah okay. I will need a fork. We are gonna just... Spin, is that all right? Uh, doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, tweezers. tweezers can work. Brush, spatula. Let's see what we got there. Tweezers, let's do tweezers. Tweezers, we need. Uh, anything, like, just to make a couple of holes. We'll do one like that and we'll score one. Ah, sick. Fancy. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll start by so scoring some. You do you, and I'll All do right. this one. Let's see which one's better, maybe. It's not a competition, the <laughs> bill. It is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to like this score this. Sorry. Uh, so I'm scoring, and the bill's stabbing. Yeah. Or freaking. <laughs> Frick, I don't know yeah. what is it exactly. Anyway, this just basically helps the marinade soak into it, and yeah. it helps it cook a bit, little bit quicker as well. So, again, a little bit of lime juice. And it looks pretty good, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Where's just, I'll, I'll prick yours while you do that. That's the one. Is that enough? Yeah. So, man, more holes mean more flavors go in. So, why not? <laughs> Both sides. Yep. A little bit to go here. Yeah? So since we have got the oven going, with this one, what we can do is we can uh, lightly roast them. What do you think, Chef? Yeah, let's do that. So the oven should have been preheated at 200 degrees already. Um, so let's let's get it in for a few minutes to get it going, and then we'll finish it in the pan. Yeah. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. So there we go. Are we marinating both sides? You didn't make oh. enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, when you cook it in the curry anyway, all the sauce is going to soak into it. So exactly. Sure, this tray fits in the oven. Yeah. All right. So, Cass, if you can okay. follow me, what we are going to do now is uh, start the curry. So you have a pan, a medium-sized uh, saucepan, and we are going to start by putting some oil in. Just plain vegetable oil? Yes. You can use coconut oil as well, right? Yeah, more yeah. flavor. But if you don't have, don't stress about it. So just a little bit of oil. And mustard seeds. 
So we just turn the head up a bit. So we want to just pretty quickly, right? Uh, bring it up slowly, so because you might burn the mustard seeds and it goes very bitter. So we'll just keep it at this temp at the moment and bring it up. So with mustard seeds, you know it's done when it starts to crackle. And you'll hear that it's going to crackle a little bit. Oh, I can start to hear it crackle. <laughs> uh, can you? Oh, yeah. I'm oh, hearing something. <laughs> I'm starting to bubble a little bit. Yeah. I'll have your paste ready for you. Oh, thank you, Chef. I'll be the sous chef today. <laughs> How about that? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, so there's some kitchen spoons here. Beautiful. So, Cass, if you come here, I can even show them that it's starting to bubble a little bit around the edges. So that's a good sign. And you can see the oil is smoking as well. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But for me, that's good. At this stage, what we can do uh, is add the curry leaves. But with curry leaves, it splatters as soon as you put it in the oil. So we're gonna stay back a little bit and put the curry leaves in. Oh, oh there's the splatter you promised. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. There yep. And then we're getting the paste in, is that right? Uh, we'll let, let it splatter like, a bit more. Yes, let all the moisture evaporate. Yep. It's starting on me now. Watch the camera. <laughs> so, as soon as you see that it goes translucent, yep. It's good for me now. It smells good as well. Those curry leaves. Curry leaf. Yep. The oil's releasing from it. It smells so good. Doesn't all right, it? Chef, go in with this. Oh, I'm going in, am I? Yes, I chef. thought you were going to do it. I was going to hand it over. Ooh. Yeah. Ah, so later on with the plain, later on with the plain flour, what we are going to do is, it's basically a coating so that the fish, it, it gives more texture to the fish, which I'm going to show it in a couple of minutes. Just going to be patient. Yes. It's, it's, it's going to get used, don't worry. <laughs> it's a step-by-step -step, uh, process. All right. So over, over here, we have the curry paste. Where the, where the curry leaves and the mustard seed. So there's a lot of moisture in this one from the tomatoes and onions. So what we are gonna do is let all that evaporate and slowly caramelize it. So as you see, it takes usually between five to eight minutes, depending on what kind of uh, induction you're using or gas stove you're using. So in the end, you want all the moisture to be out and slowly the paste will start to caramelize. All right, so we'll leave this over here. John, do you? John's getting There's... a pot for the eggplant. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Is that what you needed? Uh, I was gonna ask John to top me up with some turmeric powder and curry powder actually. Only if he can. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll be back. Oh, there he is. <laughs> That's looking so, pretty good. Yeah. At this stage, Cass, if you come here, it's going to uh, spit on you, basically. So don't be, uh, you can, at this point, you can cover it with a lid so it doesn't go everywhere or just keep stirring it as it removes the air from the bottom of the pan. So this is uh, still another five minutes, I would say, at this heat. And what we can do at this stage is, how's the, is that going in? Now this will be another, just when you probably finish your curry, get the fish into the curry, we'll put these in. Yeah, so it's good for roughly 10 minutes awesome. and should so, come out together. All right, till, uh, till that is, uh, let that caramelize. What we can do is pan, uh, coat this fish. Yeah, let's and get it, it seared and peep, uh, pre pan fry it and keep um, it on the side yeah yeah keep it on All the right. side so as everyone's asking where the flour is going to be used it's going to be used now over here let's so, save some for the eggplant as well for the vegetarian people as well all right we can just keep that one on the side for the vegetables. so so with your fish 
into the flower like that on all the side so what's going to happen is when you pan fry that fish you're going to create this nice beautiful crust on it and then when you cook it in the curry um it will absorb the flavor even more and fish will be just so tasty on the outside exactly you're just adding flavors and textures as you're going i quickly wash my hands and be back i'll clean your bench for you chef thank you chef all right, so this is going to get pan fried quickly and then we're going to put it to the side and then John's going to show you how to do the spring rolls. Um, and again, like he's just going to show you how to do it. You don't have to really do it as he's doing it. Or you can if you want, but you should probably save it to eat after dinner because you want it hot and crispy. Oh yeah, this is going to show you how to do the rum and sesame dip as well. Rum, honey and sesame. All right. Finish. Let's start by sealing the fish. So we're searing the fish now, right? Yes, that's right. Are we keeping an eye on the eggplant as well? Uh, I've got eyes on the eggplant, it's fine. Again, with this one, you want your pan on medium to Medium high, that's a medium. I'd say medium, medium high. Um, when you put your oil, you want the pan to be lightly mm. smoking. Yep. Um, just remember that when you put your fish in, the pan will cool down. Um, and I mean, the fish should be at room temperature as well when you start, just, um, just so it cooks a bit more evenly. So that should be just enough oil for the fish. Yeah. So it's probably a little bit less oil than shallow frying. Yeah. Um, Keep it a bit healthy, <laughs> right? Uh, a good non-stick pan is recommended uh, because you don't want your fish to be sticking on the pan. But if you don't have one, what's a good other way to do it? Um, just make sure that the fish is um, basically coated evenly. Um, so when things stick to pan, it's basically when the moisture releases from whatever you're pan frying and that sticks, makes it stick. So if it's a nice dry surface, so if there's a good amount of flour, you don't have to worry too much about yeah. it sticking. Okay, thank you, chef. Okay. That's a good tip. <laughs> thank you. I'm a chef. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you see over here as well with the curry, uh, curry paste, the moisture is evaporating and it's slowly starting to change color. And that's what we want at this stage. I think we'll um, turn it up a bit and um, we'll add the coconut. Uh, the, we'll add the spices in. Yeah, first. The spices first. John, do you mind topping up me with some curry leaves and no, sorry, curry powder and turmeric powder, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Is that on your recipe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we just want to get this as close to finished as possible. So when it's go time to get the lamb in, finish off the fish, Sounds it's it's all going to come up together. Yep. <laughs> that's starting to smell very good already with that onion yeah. garlic that tomato and the bill also <laughs> makes the best butter chicken in melbourne <laughs> but uh, it, 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 it is a long process to make butter chicken yes the bill's butter chicken takes about 12 hours so we couldn't do it tonight, unfortunately, but maybe next time. I'm sure we yeah. can do it some other time, yeah. So now we have got the oil pretty much boiling. Let's make some space. The oil is on, yeah. Slight, yeah. Lightly smoking, Just ever so slightly. All right. So what we are going to do is always uh, when you're working with oil, try to put things away from you. Uh, like so that. it falls away from you, so the oil splashes the other way, right? Yes. And not towards you. I mean, we've all done that to ourselves, <laughs> haven't we? Oh. I used to do it to myself all the time, but you know, you learn after burning yourself a few times. And there you go. Don't be scared of the oil. 
be gentle with it and you'll not hurt yourself. Oh. Explain it's looking good. So let's light up the back one and we'll get two going. Yeah. How's that sound? Yeah. This is uh, for all the vegetarians out there. Hot oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be careful. Don't worry about me, mate. <laughs> Just a bit of fire. All right. So, Cass, if you see, we want a bit of caramelization, a bit of color. And see, what the marinade has done is it's given more yellow color to the fish. And that's what we are looking for. We'll just lightly caramelize the other side as well. All right, should we quickly start the eggplant and then get it in the pan? Yeah. And That's then I think that. we'll split this into two. Yeah. And then um, we'll add the coconut milk. And... Sounds good. Yeah. That's... Can we a plate, please, John? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so... All right, so I'm just going to quickly help Nabil uh, to flower these eggplants. Same thing as the fish. Very simple, just both sides. Just Again, it adds all that texture for it to it. And the good thing about scoring it, there's a reason why scoring it better than poking it, <laughs> is the flour actually goes into all the score marks and <laughs> it even gets crispier. Actually, uh, poking it's pretty good as well, Nabil. Yours look good. All right, so we'll clean the pan. Actually, we already got a fresh pan. We'll get the eggplants in. So the eggplants are about 60% cooked now. How's that look? Is that good Yeah, enough? it's good. So we're going to do the same process with the eggplants as well. Uh, over here, if you come and see, my curry paste has started to caramelize. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is add some Add the curry powder and the turmeric to it and caramelize even further. If it's sticking too much to the base, what you can do is add a touch of coconut milk and cook or just water even and continue caramelizing it. All right, um, so we're gonna add the coconut milk in soon and then John's gonna talk through his spring rolls. Yeah. And keep it on eggplants, right? <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's really good color. Oh, yeah. And with these eggplants, we just put a bit less oil than the fish because eggplant is almost like a sponge. It'll soak up all the oil if you put more oil in. So we just put a lot less than the fish. And um, as I said, it's 60% cooked. So it yeah. can go to the side now. And uh, we can get back to it. All right, awesome. So with my curry, uh, it's caramelized. It's looking good. And as you see, the oil's a little bit separated. It can separate more. If you want, to, if you want more caramelization, feel free to do that. But I'll be done in 30 seconds over here. So uh, add your coconut milk. Give that a good stir. Um... Add more coconut milk. So we're just going to make a bit extra because we got the eggplant thing right now. Like yes, please. Uh, just a little bit more. We're going to turn it down as well as it just fits on there. So we're going to turn it down to a simmer now. Yes. And while it's simmering, we know the fish is seared. We know the lamb's ready to go in the oven. So let's get John on. Yes. Sweet. So uh, I think the first thing we can do is just um, clear up a little bit. Yeah, let's but the first thing we want, to, last thing we want is uh, some cross contamination. Mm 
Uh, sorry, I forgot to add in some water. Uh, I'm adding just uh, around 100 to 150 mils of water. So what it, what it does, it, uh, it helps to, what we are trying to do at the moment is simmer. And what this will do is slowly reduce and it won't be too rich to eat. So yeah, so if it was just coconut milk rich. and it reduces, it will be too, too rich. rich. Exactly. But then you're gonna add water now and while yeah. that reduces, the water will be gone by the time you're exactly. ready to cook your fish. Yeah. So the flavor will all be there and it won't be too rich. That's awesome. It. Cool. And then back to John. All right, so for dessert, we're gonna have some banana and jackfruit spring rolls. Uh, we call that Thron in the Philippines. It's a very popular street food that you can find pretty much everywhere uh, on the islands. Um, and yeah, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get your oil. Um, if you're deep frying, you want to get your oil um, heating up slowly. Now we want to heat that up to about 180 degrees. Um, but if you don't have a thermometer, Khan's going to show you a cool trick later on to see uh, yeah. how, tell if your oil is ready to go. So I'm sure everybody throughout isolation has had some ripe bananas in. And so I just to interrupt again. Uh, Again, you don't have to cook your spring rolls now. Um, yeah. We're just showing you, and we do recommend that you yeah, yeah. into the meal um, so it's nice and hot yeah. and crispy. So we'll go through it uh, all together now, but I'm sure you guys have some ripe bananas at home or overripe. And personally, I've gotten sick of banana muffins and banana cakes, so I thought I'd show you banana bread. I still love banana breads though. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna show you uh, a nice little different dessert that you can do with it, nice and warm, crispy, perfect for these uh, cold winter nights that we're about to have. So yeah, let's talk about the jackfruit quickly. I yeah. think a lot of people don't know much so about jackfruit. This here is jackfruit. Can you see that in the camera? So jackfruit is a tropical fruit uh, from Southeast Asia. Very fragrant, very sweet. And these are very big as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, huge, they're spiky. Like that big? Yeah, <laughs> pretty big, pretty big. So these uh, are canned in syrup, the candied just as good as ripe, fresh jackfruit. If you can't find these, uh, you can replace that with canned peaches from your local supermarket, work just as well. I actually well. prefer these rather than these are my favorite. getting into the whole ones because they're spiky, and then you gotta get through the seeds. So yeah, I think canned is actually... Well, you gotta peel them first, that's the... Yeah, I know, that's the hard part, right? So with your jackfruit, you just wanna slice uh, some strips, as such. Now, depending on how much or how little jackfruit you want, you know, go wild. I like a lot, so we're going to do most of this. And this is a really great dessert that you can do at home because you can make a lot of it. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to cook it now. You can keep it in the freezer. At home, we'd make a big batch of them, keep them in the freezer, and pretty much fry them up when we feel like it. And that's keeping it in the freezer, right? I think... Most, a lot of people might be thinking keep it in the fridge, but yeah, don't do that because the moisture comes out yeah. and the wrapper gets soaked up and then it burns in the oil. And, and it doesn't get crispy. Yeah. So Nabil's just taking his curry off. Um, so yeah, just take it off and then we'll get back to it. Yeah. And this is one of the things that I used to love coming home to as a kid. Um, after school, a nice little snack. We would have something in the Philippines called merienda which is pretty much an afternoon snack. And yeah, I'd be a happy boy when I saw this on the table waiting for me when I got home. Do you reckon I can get a bigger bowl? <laughs> a big one or a smaller one, Chef? No, nah, it's fine. Yeah, nah. yeah. actually, it's perfect size. Oh, it is. That's a snack for later. Let me put some tea on the board so it doesn't look, roll around for you, Chef. Yeah, that's a good idea, that's, right? That's uh, safety first. <laughs> So at home, always put something You down. should have set me up for success. Oh, I'm sorry, Chef. It yeah. won't happen again. All right. No, not that first. So bananas. Peel your bananas. Yeah, banana skins. Not good. No. No mass. No good. <laughs> Actually, can one of you please get me a bowl of water with a brush? Yeah. Please. I think it goes on that. Bowl of water. Oh. He's one I prepared <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Where'd that one come from? So with your bananas, um, after you peel them, just cut them in half, uh, as such. And then cut them in half again.
And then, so, you kind of want them to be straight, right? Just so they roll up nicely. What you can do is you can go to the shops, you can go to the supermarket and pick out the straightest bananas, and uh, they'll never even tell. So, I mean, like... So, you're one of those ones. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to do this. I like to do this just to make it nice and straight. But, you know, just trim them off so they're... You'll see later. And those are perfect snacks while you're making your banana spring rolls. Can I have a piece? Yeah. <laughs> they smell so good. Well, I've, I've, I've cut out the, the bruised bit, which is... Nothing wrong with the bruised bit. Breakfast snacks. No, there's nothing wrong with the bruised bit. I mean, I don't find anything wrong with it. I'll, I'll eat it. Okay, so what you want to do now is uh, you want to coat your bananas in caster sugar. And that's just gonna not caramelize inside the spring roll, but just add some seasoning. Okay. Can I just borrow the thermometer? Yeah, of course. Um, so this is our thermometer set up tonight. Um, so you're probably wondering how it's gonna work. It's a bit wet, just dry it off before you put in oil, but basically when the oil is hot enough, it will start bubbling up like that. You can probably see that. So that's I reckon that's around 170. Yeah. Um, another way to check if your oil is hot at home is um, using bread, old style bread. Um, if it browns in about 15 seconds, it's perfect temperature, I think. All right, so spring roll wrapper. You can get these at your Asian store in the freezer section. Um, and we've had a few um, kind of questions on, on the chat. Uh, what can I do if I don't, can't find spring roll wrapper? Uh, it's pretty easy, like, there's also another street food in the Philippines where you get big bananas like this, coated in sugar, and then fry it. Uh, and then you get a beautiful caramelized or caramel coating on a cooked banana, and that's delicious too. So don't fret if you can't find spring roll wrapper. Um, you can just go ahead with that. So there's the brush. Beautiful. So with the spring roll, you want two, two bits, pretty much one half per spring roll. Just lay it there on the, kind of like near you, on the end. Um, as little or as many jackfruit as you like. And I like a lot of jackfruit. Do you, Khan? I love jackfruit. Yep. And, you know, try, try to find these at your Asian store, especially if you've never had them. I think you'll really, really love them. We've also got some crushed peanuts we're going to put in there, um, just for a bit of texture and some richness. And then what you want to do, you've got uh, a brush and some water handy. This is going to stick your spring roll wrapper together and make, ensure it doesn't flare out during your frying. And when your oil's at the temp at temperature you need, just um, kind of knock it down and so it doesn't get too hot. If it gets too hot, it's going to burn and yeah, that's no good. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's looking good. I think I saved it. Thanks, Khan. <laughs> he's, he's always saves me. <laughs> so you want to, I should explain that. You want to fold that little lip up and then roll over tight. You don't have to be perfect for this. You know, there's something perfect that you could do with your kids, with your partner. Have fun with it um, because, you know, at the end, it's still going to be delicious, I hope, anyway. Um, so when you get to that bit, fold over the sides, make a little parcel, enclose everything. And then just keep rolling until you get there to the end. A bit more water just to make sure. And then roll over to seal. We'll, awesome. make, a, we'll make a couple more because I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, I can't wait to have one. So usually in the Philippines, after this stage, we'll roll it again in the sugar and then deep fry it. Um, I'm not really a big fan of that because it, A, ruins your oil and usually after the first or second one, it starts to burn. And burnt and caramel the flavor. kind of pours off it as well, yeah. right? And it sticks on your next one. So that's why we have the, um, the rum sauce. Um, and look, I like rum. If you don't have rum at home, that's your snack. Thank you. You can mm. use any brown liquor, brandy, cognac, whiskey. Or if you don't want to put alcohol in it, when you drain off your peaches or your jackfruit, you'll get the syrup. 
and you can use that in the sauce instead, uh, and it'll be delicious. So after we do this, I think we'll make the sauce. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll get to frying these. And then, and then it's going to be go time. Like everything's going to get cooking because everyone's hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah, I think everyone's hungry. I'm, I'm pretty hungry too. So, yeah, let's get this going. Sorry, chef. I mean, it's almost dinner time, you know. So one more. Now, now, you're, now you got me under pressure. Look, my folds are no. My well, lover is good. <laughs> no, nah, it's beautiful. No, nah, it's rustic. I mean, nothing wrong with rusty. Exactly. No, nah, it's nice. What so you there you go. A couple of spring rolls. I'm just going to wash my hands quickly. I'm covered in sugar. Mm -hmm. So the curry, um, you probably noticed yeah. in the background that Nabil's put a tray underneath. It's because these stove tops are commercial stove tops. They're really strong. So the tray is basically to reflect a bit of heat. So it's on low heat if you're at home. So if, in case you're wondering what that's for. Is that right, Nabil? Yes, that's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go on to the rum and honey and sesame dipping sauce. Right, so here I've got about a quarter cup of honey. It's into a small pot. We're just going to bring this up to on like a medium heat just to kind of melt it and make it a bit more viable because it's a very cold night tonight. Yeah. And just like Khan said, you know, you don't have to do this now. We're going to show you now. Um, but when you go to make it and you need instructions again, just refer back to the Facebook Live video. Uh, and the video sh should be out tomorrow as well. So if you want to do it tomorrow, you can follow along again. You can see the honey is loosening up a bit. A little cheeky little peanut in there as well. That's not, that'll be fine. <laughs> and like, you don't have to put peanuts in there as well. Traditionally, it doesn't have peanuts, but I like that texture. And if you don't have peanuts or you don't like them, you can substitute it with almonds or any other type of nut. So when it's loosened up like that, go in with your alcohol if you're doing it or with your syrup. Uh, if you're doing alcohol and you're using gas like me, um, just be careful. Take it off the heat, stand back, um, because we've all seen flambe videos. But what you want to do now is just bring it up to the boil and burn off a little bit of that alcohol, that harshness that alcohol gives you. Once you burn that off, you, what you're going to be left with is just the sweetness of the rum. And that's uh, the flame that we're talking about. So you don't, you want to stand back from that unless uh, you want to lose all your eyebrows, which is a no, no. Yeah, that's, that's what happened to me with my hair. Thought so. <laughs> so, when the, if it does catch on fire, and the, once the flame kind of disappears, that's when you know most of your alcohol is burned off. And then we just bring it up to the boil like that. And then we've got some toasted white and black sesame seeds. Just a couple of teaspoons. And that's your sauce. You want to do that before you do your spring roll, just so it kind of comes back together and cools down a touch. Just one in there, that. No, I've got one. Oh, awesome. So now Khan has brilliantly well, probed let me get that. my let me get that probe again. oil again. Again, oil. just a reminder that the probe needs to be dry. Please. You don't want to be splashing water in your oil. Oh, it's not to be the heat, Chef. That's all right. I'm just going to turn it up a bit. It's better that your oil is a little bit lower than temperature that you need than hotter because you can always bring it back up. Yeah. And it's yeah, dangerous when you're putting something in yeah. super hot oil, just splashes everywhere. Yeah. Now, if you have a deep fryer, you can use that. If you don't want to use that much oil um, that we're using here, you can use half that and kind of shallow fry your spring rolls. But... Keep an eye on them and turn them frequently so you get nice, even coloring. And almost there. Maybe almost, another almost. 30 seconds to a minute and we should be there. This is best enjoyed hot, uh, fresh 
out of the fryer uh, with the dipping sauce. And you can even get some vanilla ice cream or some whipped cream on the side. That'll be delicious too. So I reckon the oil's ready to go. Just like with the kingfish, you want to lay these away from you uh, so you don't have any of this oil splattering on you. And lay it gently. And these won't take long at all. These will take maybe two or three minutes. So if you have time now, or if, you, if you've been following along, you can get them done, um, keep them out or keep them in the freezer. And then later after dinner, you can have these and have them in front of the telly. So you can see how quickly they're kind of coloring. You want to take it to a nice golden brown. You don't want to take it too quick or it's going to start to burn and the inside won't warm through. So this is a good pace. <laughs> Khan's hungry, he's just telling me about the time. Yeah, let's, let's hurry up, yeah. <laughs> So just roll them over and color the other side. They're only flipping over like that because of a little air pocket in there. But you know, you can just hold it down like this. It's to be all good. So you should have a tray ready, right? With yep. paper towel to drain it. Tray ready with paper towel to drain off all the excess oil. So if you're doing this without the spring roll wrapper, what I reckon you could do is you could shallow fry those uh, coated bananas in the sugar. And like you could coat them in brown sugar to be really nice. And then kind of build a salad with your toasted, uh, toasted uh, peanuts, toasted sesame seeds, your jackfruit, pour a little bit of uh, the dipping sauce on top, and then some whipped cream or ice cream, and that'd be delicious too. So we're getting to the color we want now. Nice and golden brown. Mm. Don't be afraid of a little burst like that. It means the inside is caramelizing as well. And take your time with these. Don't be, don't be in a rush to pull them out like Khan is. So don't they're nice and crispy. Time. Come on, I'm hungry. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> don't take your time. Get it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. And now I know you want to tuck into it straight away. Yeah, like I let do. it cool down a bit though, right? Let it cool down. All right. So here's a plate I prepared earlier with a customary banana leaf. Just serve your dipping sauce on the side. As such. And then, you know, you can you can just go the full one or you can cut in half. And that's how crispy she is. You get all those different layers, nice warm banana, jackfruit, peanut on there and then dip it in. Right oh so those are your banana and jackfruit spring rolls. Awesome. Once again, you don't have to do it now. Do you can do these after dinner and have them nice and fresh and piping hot. Alright, so it's go time now. We're gonna be doing a few things at once. Can I just use that board? Oh, of course chef. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll just uh, flip the board around because we don't want to get any Banana on our cucumbers. Mm. So the lettuce, I've basically just cut the end, um, the root of it, and just get, gave it a nice rinse on the water. Cucumbers just cut into slices on the angle. So this is just to add a bit of freshness. All right. Go on the side, and then how long you reckon you'll be in a build? Less um, than ten minutes. Yeah. All right. Let's get the, skew, um, the skewers in. Perfect. 
So we've got the skewers here. So obviously sitting out like that, it's going to be at room temperature. It's going to be perfect to go in. I'm just going to brush it with an extra bit of extra marinade. So that's going to help it caramelize up further. So we'll start with the cabbage one first. And the oil in the marinade also helps it transfer its heat. So it heats up a bit better as well. So 10 minutes is all this needs. Uh, depending on how strong your oven is at home, actually. Um, we're using a commercial oven, so 10 minutes should give it a nice caramelization. caramelization. So we'll just put it in. Try not to forget about it, so I'll put a timer on. Last thing you want is for them to be burnt. And then Nabil's going to finish his curry now. Hopefully your rice is ready and hot, so let's go. All right. So as you see, it's spitting a lot. So what we're going to do is move it away from the heat. At this stage, thank God it's yellow, so because we're cooking a yellow curry. Uh, so depending on your liking, I like my curry to be, especially this curry, to be a bit thick. So I've reduced it. But feel free to add some coconut milk at this stage or water, depending on what is your liking. So I'm pretty happy with this because I'll actually add some water now. So it's all it's about water. getting it right now. Yeah. And you want to season it now as well so the seasoned curry will soak into the, the fish. fish and the and eggplant. The eggplant. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to season with salt at, at this stage. Right. Just salt, yep. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. That was a big splash there. When cooking, I uh, try to have a taste every now and then, see what, uh, how, how the things are going in there. Um, and it's all about like understanding what it tastes like at yeah. every stage as well, right? So exactly. You know oh. how long you should cook things for. You know, if you need to add that water. Mm. So if you tasted it before and it, it was rich, then yeah, you add your water, right? Exactly. So at this stage, I'm very happy with it. Oh, it reminds me of home. And I'm going to let it reduce slightly. And we're going to... So what we are going to do is uh, first do the eggplant. Yeah, let's do the eggplant. We'll split, yeah. it, split it up. So we've got so, a pan ready to go on the eggplant here. Yep, okay. So at this, what we are going to do is just put... This curry is quite rich because of the coconut milk. You have desiccated coconut in it as well. So. You, you don't need much of it. And there we go. So that's looking good there. Oh, thanks for the eggplant, Chef. Beautiful. Looks they're both good. nice. Yeah. And they're pretty much like almost cooked, like just sitting there. Exactly. After it came out of the oven, residual heat kind of just cooked yeah. it through. So it's just going to soak up all that nice yellow curry now. Yeah. We'll turn it up slightly. Yep. Let's get heat into it. Uh, we can go a little bit more. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. There's plenty of room for the fish, so yeah. why not? So just go to your eggplants with enough curry you want. And we are going to let that cook for around uh, three to four minutes. Yeah, I'll just say. so it soaks in. Oh, yeah. And uh, with the same, we have our fillets over here. So, Cass, if you see, this is our kingfish fillet, which we had said earlier. What we're going to do is gently drop it in the curry and let it sit in the curry for say three to four minutes. So you really want to gently cook this, right? Yeah. Because if you're boiling it, all that like, heat is just going to push all the moisture out of the fish and exactly. you don't want that, right? And it's going to go quite dry and we don't want dry fish. So again, just coat it with uh, the curry. My parents actually mm. love dry fish. So. Oh, same as my parents. Like, I think it's a different it's thing. Like it, it, it dries out, but the flavor right. intensifies. Got yeah. all the moisture out of it. But yeah. you know, so there's fish in there. There's definitely fish in there. We have just covered it. Yeah, where the fish go? Oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna we have brought it up to heat, and we're just gonna let it sit on the side. So it's probably sitting at what, like 80, 85, 90 degrees now. So that's yes. around around simmering, and so it's basically gonna steep. Right. Exactly, and that's a very good temperature for the fish to poach. 
It's not too harsh. We will come back to this eggplant. Yes. No, that was just salt. Salt. So we yeah. want to keep the lime nice and fresh. So if you cook out the lime, you'll kind of lose all that freshness and it'll go a little bit bitter. Yeah. And um, that's not, that's, Nabil's mum would not approve that. Right? <laughs> no, she wouldn't. So we're going to do the same uh, with the egg time. Just oh, we still got six minutes on the skewers. I think we're going pretty good on time. All right. So dinner is going to be ready in eight minutes. So I hope mm -hmm. you're all ready. <laughs> Eight minutes, it'll take us two minutes to plate. Oh, uh, should, yeah, should they? Two How's minutes. that ice the thing? Is that ice even cooked, chef? <laughs> it's on keep warm. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't cool. worry about that. So, yeah, so we have a couple of minutes over here. At this stage, what we can do is let the eggplant and the fish sit in the curry to absorb flavor. And once again, we are going to check for the seasoning. And since we have two minutes, uh, how's the sambal looking? I've still got five minutes. Oh. It's two minutes to play. Let's, let's, yeah, let's season the sambal. All right. So, sambal's been sitting there. It's cooled down. I actually like the sambal cold. Um, I find it a bit more refreshing than having a hot sambal, especially with the coriander in there and the smato. So, just a bit of lime juice, a bit of salt. You can put sugar if you want to balance it out. I usually prefer sugar as well. And a bit of white pepper. Or you can use green pepper. You can even use black pepper, to be honest. It's more of a visual thing. The flavor is still going to be there. So I'm going to have to give it a quick taste. Mm. What do you guys reckon? Let's have a taste. Okay. Cash, you want to taste it as well? <laughs> oh, oh yum. Mm. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. What are the other things I would recommend eating this with? I think everything. Um, like, it's everything. <laughs> no, like, um, I think on the recipe it says save some for the fish curry. So, I, I, as soon as you taste it, I'm, I'm sure you're going to want to finish it all. But you, should save some for the fish curry, and I think it goes well with most meats. I think, like I, I, I actually like it with uh, fried chicken. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah, with it's the deep very fried nice fried chicken. chicken. Oh, it's so good. Fried um, chicken. Yeah, fried even I ain't gonna have it with steak. Like I'll yeah. just pan fry a steak, just salt, mm -hmm. pepper, green sambal, maybe that's a fried cool. egg if I'm feeling, you know, <laughs> hungry, and yeah, it's perfect. Uh, should we uh, give a quick base to the skewers? Yeah, we have a quick look. So there's still three minutes on the timer. Yeah. I'm just trying to not get my glasses to steam up. <laughs> happens, happens a lot. So still, still three minutes to go. We'll give it a quick base. So yeah, it's nice and caramelized already. All right, we'll get it back in. Glass is standing up again. I can't see. Um, how's the fish, Nabil? Uh, I'm doing a cheeky test by using a spoon. You can use a spoon to check it out at home. Or yeah. Chefs like to use tweezers cake. or cake testers. So, what I'm doing at the moment is just getting my way as to dig in the flesh. And if it comes off the bone, it's ready. Or what another way is getting a nice skewer, yeah. thin skewer, and it basically goes through without any resistance. It's ready. Um, you're not quite ready. I think, I think almost, maybe another two minutes. Two or so. minutes, yes. And two minutes on the skewers. I think so it's all going to come together, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Should we start putting yeah. our rice now? Might as well. Might We've got as two well. minutes. All right, let's yeah. let's do it, guys. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> So rice has just been in the steamer as, you know, at 60 degrees. Perfect temperature for rice. Hi, which bowl for the night should we do? This one or this one? I think that one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is my bowl, so I'm not going to touch that. It's for my lamb. Right. So here I've got just some plain basmati rice. 
So what ratio do you cook your rice to water? Uh, with basmati rice, if you soak it, so I, over here I say I have 500 grams of rice, uncooked rice, I've soaked it, I put 400 grams of water, and I use the absorption method to cook it. It takes usually, with basmati rice, it's because it's so tender, it takes not more than 10 minutes. So yeah, we're gonna... I think with the fish as well, um, we, we don't really use lids in the kitchen, but if you're at home, when you took it off the heat before, maybe put the lid on. Um, maybe if you have a lid now, put it on, and it kind of just helps the heat circulate a bit better. Yeah. Um, so it cooks a bit more evenly. All right, rice looks great. Nabil? Yeah. Thanks, John. Skewers are coming out shortly. So. All right. How are the home cooks doing? Any questions for us, or would you guys want to know more about? Oh, that's the timer. Sorry about that. All right, let's get these skewers out. The person asked earlier if um, you needed to wrap the skewers. See, they're not really burnt. They're colored, but they're still intact. So we'll just start to plate these. Um, you can caramelize it further if you like, but 10 minutes is cooked. Um, you can cook this on the barbecue as well, which is also very nice. Let's just plate it up like so. And then we've got our little cabbage skewer here. For the vegetarians. Yep. Nice and beautiful. All right, so are we missing anything, Bill? So we got your curry, should be ready now. Yes. Oh, Come on, it's dinner time to build. Yes, let's do it. Let's play the eggplant first. Yeah. Right. I think this would be a nice plate for the eggplant. Yeah, and then that's for the fish. What a spread. Yeah. And then spring rolls for the dessert. I'll be uh, happy. I'll be pretty happy with that. So there you go with the eggplant. Big fan of the big cook, Chef. Exactly. Thanks, Chef. Must be the scoring. <laughs> Must, be. <laughs> Must be the scoring. Then again, what we are going to do is... Have you added lime to that? No. So we are, what we are going to do is add lime. As I forgot, we are going to add lime right. on the plate. That's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here to help you. <laughs> so, yeah. But these things do happen, right? Oh. When, you, when, you, when you eat it, you're going to be like, hang on, I'm missing something. <laughs> Oh, and then, lime, and then you just have the lime, like, <laughs> uh, All right. So, let's add lime juice to it. And you can add more to your liking. And we're going to garnish this one with some just chopped coriander. So, with so us, we, we, when we cook coriander, we use the stalks as well, right? Yeah. Because there's texture, it's fresh, it's crunchy, it's just so nice. Right? Exactly. A lot of people just pick the leaves, but I think the stalks is where it's at. So now we're gonna plate up the fish. Um I guess it depends on the heat. If you're on a high heat, it takes around uh, this curry paste should take around five to eight minutes. Yeah, I was gonna say six minutes. So hang on, depends yeah. on the heat, depends on how strong your stove top is. And what kind of pan you're using as well. Yeah. So, so if, if you have a heavy bottom cast iron pan, it will come less quicker yeah. because it will be dangerous. Or if you have a wide pan, obviously oh. there's more surface area, so it will cook quicker. Um, or if you cheat, um, I do this sometimes at home actually, I put more oil in, so the oil will heat up quicker. Um, and then it'll caramelize a lot quicker as well. Yeah. So let's not forget the lime juice now for the fish curry. So we have some lime juice. You don't want to break the cut that. You want to go in there. I might use a different. Uh... Okay, just put the pot there and then we'll use two hands. All right, that's a big cutlet. That's very generous, mm -hmm. but yeah. family of four, I'll be happy with that. Yeah. Uh, 
Beautiful. Right. Give a quick uh, stir, and then again, it's quite a rich uh, curry. So I don't like as much. It's quite filling, so I go more. And what do you have left? You can actually just put it in the freezer and save exactly. it for next time, right? Yeah. Then you skip that step yeah. of having to make the curry paste and reducing the coconut milk. Yeah. You just get straight into it, defrost, and go. All right. So is that clean enough for you, Chef? Yes, Chef. That right. looks perfect. <laughs> and again, we're gonna just uh, come. Oh, sorry. Garnish it with some coriander. That's everywhere. I love coriander. Yeah. It's it's, my, it's my favorite herb. Like I absolutely love coriander. I would eat yeah. it with anything. There's and here you go. That's that's dinner right there. So, um, hope everyone enjoyed their cooking class. Um, I hope you all donate generously because it's all for a good cause. And um, before we go, we just have Betsy from Opportunity just to come to say thank you. She's just going to borrow John's microphone. John. <laughs> so this may be a little messy because I'm, I'm connected to John now, but we just really want to thank everybody for participating. And, and first off, th thank the chefs. So Khan and John and Nabil, great job you guys tonight. I, I hope everybody at home is going to have now a delicious meal and I'm hoping we're going to get to taste some of this too. We want to say mm -hmm. a special thanks to our event partners, uh, Sunda, um, the Entre Mides, the City Lane, the Colab Agency and the Windsor, uh, who's actually hosting us tonight in their kitchen. And um, just remember everybody, we've got double donations going on tonight. So every dollar for dollar that you um, donate will be you know, providing a lot of support to people in need. Thank you so much for joining us for Cooking for Opportunity. Remember you can watch us again on Facebook Live if you'd like to later, if you forget a step and enjoy your dinner. Thank you so much and we are Finished. Good night. Yep.